Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor Mechanical Engineering, Anjaleyamal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koil Vanni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the subject Design of Transmission System. And this is lecture number 5.1. We are going to discuss about the gear drive. The first lecture is on the fundamentals of gear drive. The topic we are going to discuss the drive, gear drive, the types of the gear drive, law of gearing, and the types of gear profile. So, in the earlier lectures, we discussed the design of belt, flat belt, and the V belt, design of chain drive and the rope drive. And in, th in this lecture, we start with the gear drive. The learning outcome to the students at the end of the lecture, the student will be able to classify the gear drive, state the law of gearing and compare the gear profiles. The gear is defined as a machine element used to transmit power between rotating shafts by means of progressive engagement of projections, projection called teeth. So, in the gear wheel there will be teeth. The teeth will progressively engage to transmit the power between the rotating shafts. The gear gears are the toothed member which transmits power or motion between two shafts by meshing without any slip. So hence the hence the gear drive are called passive drives. So the earlier drives we discussed the flat belt, chain drive or V belt. There is a possibility of slip. So the the drives they are slipless is gear drive and hence they are called as positive drives. Gears operates in pair. So the smaller of the smaller of the pair is called as pinion and the larger is called as gear. So there is a pinion which is smaller in size and the gear which is larger in size. They are engaging progressively to transmit the power or the motion. There are different types of gear drive. So we classify the gear drive. So first classification based on the relative position of the shaft. So this may be parallel shaft. So when the shafts are parallel, there are three types of gears used in the parallel shaft, spur gear, helical gear and herringbone gear. And uh, non-intersecting shaft when the shafts are non-intersecting and intersecting. So when the shafts are intersecting, we have straight bevel gear and spiral bevel gear. So the shaft are perpendicular per perpendicular. They are intersecting at 90 degree or lesser degree. So depending on the requirement. So the 90 degree it is straight bevel gear and then we have the spiral bevel gear. The two shafts involved in the power transmission when they are not intersecting they are called as there are we are using two types of gears here one is hypoid gear and the warm gear in our discussion in the design of gears we will be designing spur gear helical gear straight bevel gear and warm gear so these are all the major topics that we are going to discuss and we are going to solve problem in four topics design of spur gear design of helical gear design of state bevel gear and design of warm gear and depending on the number of steps this may be single stage two stage and multi stage so the speed reducer they use the single stage or the two stage gearbox gears whereas the gearbox of an automobile or a machine machine tool they have multi stages so the number of output speed will be more so there will be single input speed and there will be multiple output speed depending on the requirement. And depending on the relative position of the shaft, this may be simple gear, relative motion of the shaft, this may be simple gear, planetary gear and differential gear. And the types of engagement, based on the types of engagement, this may be internal gear and the external gear. Now we are going to design, we are, we, we will be discussing only the external gears. So, that is what uh, given in our undergraduate syllabus. So, we will be discussing only the design of external gears. And the first type is per gear. So, we will I will show some of the 
diagram or the animation of the the four different types of gear drive that we are going to discuss in detail the first one is spur gear spur gears have their teeth parallel to the axis and are used for transmitting power between two parallel shaft they are simple in construction easy to manufacture and the cost is also less so majority of the gear boxes we are using only the spur gear they have highest efficiency and the excellent precision rating the efficiency of this spur gear is also very high comparing with other gear drives depending on the size on the type the maximum power that can be transmitted is 18 kW at a speed of 10000 rpm maximum the circumferential velocity is 200 meters per second maximum and overall efficiency is 96 to 97 99 percentage and this is the spur gear drive so the larger one is called as gear and the smaller one is called as pinion they have the teeth parallel to the axis of the shaft and they engage so the depending on the gear ratio required so depending on the the speed of the driven shaft so the pinion and the gear are suitably connected so that you will get the required speed ratio and this is again the profile of the the engagement of the spur gear drive and this is the automobile gear box which is using the spur gear so multiple speed output will be there multiple output will get so using the progressive or proper engagement of gears in particular stages and this is how the spur gear is transmitting the power so the smaller wheel is the pinion and larger wheel is gear and it is progressively engaging rotating and then transmitting the power this is compound gear so when you when the speed ratio we want a specific speed ratio we want to reduce the speed ratio from larger value we may use the compound gear depending on the speed ratio we will be using simple spur gear drive or compound spur gear drive next one is helical gear they have the teeth inclined to the axis of rotation so look at the teeth here they are inclined to the axis of the shaft the helical gears are not so noisy because more gradual engagement during the machine so comparing with the spur gear it is silent in operation because the engagement is very gradual engagement so during the meshing process and this is the working of the helical gear it is progressively very slowly engaging and it is noiseless operation and the this diagram is herring bone gear so herring bone gear they have the teeth on both side the helical teeth on both side this is called as herring bone gears The, these are all the reducing gear box of a cement mill using the helical gear, and this is the automobile gear box using the helical gear. And the bevel gear, so they have teeth formed on conical surfaces and are mainly used for transmitting power between intersecting shaft. So look at the shaft. So this is the pinion, smaller wheel, and this is the gear, larger wheel. The axis of the shaft when you extend the axis of the shaft they meet perpendicular so the they are all called a straight bevel gear and they are intersecting the shafts are the axis are intersecting and this is the differential drive so the the animation is the how the differential gear drive is working and this is used in the automobile and this is how the bevel gear is transmitting power between the pinion and the gear and this drive is warm gear it is used for non intersecting shaft so it is the warm gear resembles a screw the larger wheel so this is called as gear so the rotating element the circular element is called as gear and the top element is called as the worm so the warm gear drive it has very low efficiency but the speed ratio will be very high so very we can transmit power between non intersecting shaft with the high speed ratio but the efficiency of the drive is very very low comparing with all the other drives and this is rack and pinion mechanism so it is also coming under the gear drive so the rack and pinion mechanism we have a sliding element and rotating element so the rack is 
sliding and the pinion is rotating and you may find this rack and pinion mechanism in the drilling machine. So, here we have the rack and pinion mechanism and in the shaping machine, the carriage of the lathe is sliding on the bed of the lathe. So, we have the rack and pinion mechanism for the horizontal movement of the carriage along the bed of the lathe. And this is internal gears. So, we have internal gear drive and planetary gear drive. So, this is used for certain specific applications. For, for example, watch mechanism, we are using the internal gears. And we compare all the four types of gears we are going to discuss. One is per gear, helical gear, bevel gear and the worm gear. The features and precision rating and application of the particular type of gear. So, spur gear, there are parallel shafting, high speeds and loads, highest efficiency, precision rating is excellent. They are applicable to all types of gear trains and the wide range of velocity ratios. Helical gears, again they are parallel shafting, very high speed and loads is load carrying capacity, efficiency is slightly less than this per gear, the precision rating is good. The application of the helical gear, most applicable to high speeds and loads application, also used wherever spur gear is used. So, these are all, depending on the speed ratio, we either we use this spur gear or helical gear. So, helical gear, it will, uh, the, when you have higher speed and the load requirement, we may select the spur gear than the, sorry, we may select the helical gear comparing with the spur gear. Bevel gear, they are used in the intersecting shaft. They are high speed, high load, precision rating is fair to the good. It is suitable for 1 is to 1 speed ratio. So, 1 is to 1 uh, speed ratio and a higher velocity ratio for right angle mesh and other angle also is possible uh, for designing the bevel gear. Worm gear, right angle skew shaft, high velocity ratio is possible, high speed and high load is also possible, but the low efficiency, most designs non reversible. So, we cannot reverse, whereas the spur gear, helical gear, we can reverse the application. What do you mean by reverse? The pinion, I mean the uh, driving shaft and the driven shaft can be interchanged, but here the, it is non-reversible. Precision rating is fair to good. So, high velocity ratio, wherever high velocity ratio, high angular mesh and the high loads are there, we may prefer warm gear drive. It is used for non-intersecting shaft. And there are some standards for the gear design. So, international organization for standardization ISO recommendation. So, ISO number 888, it uh, gives the international vocabulary of gears, various terminology, everything is given here. You can refer to it, you can google it and get the information. ISO number R701, it gives the international gear notation symbols for geometrical data. The Indian standard for gear design is IS2458 and IS2467. So, these are all the standards for the Indian conditions for the design of gears. And the law of gearing. So, we said the smaller wheel is the pinion, the larger wheel is the gear. The fundamental law of gearing states that the angular velocity ratio between the gears of a gear set must remain constant throughout the mesh. So, the gear ratio, the angular velocity ratio between the gears in a gear set must be constant. So, we calculate the speed ratio n 1 by n 2 which is omega 1 by omega 2, n is the speed, omega is the angular velocity, d 2 by d 1 and z 2 by z 1. So, d 2 is the diameter, d is the diameter, z is the number of teeth. So, where n is the speed, d is the diameter, z is the number of teeth and omega is the angular speed, the subscript 1 for the pinion and 2 for the gear. So, we calculate the speed ratio using this formula. And the gear profile, we have different types of gear profile. So, the profile which can satisfy the law of gearing. So, what, what, the, what there are three different types of uh, profiles available, involute, cycloidal and the circular arc or Novikov profile. So, the majority of our design, our discussion will be on the involute profile. So, cycloid and the circular arc we are not discussing, we are not designing with the cycloid and circular arc. So, in the four different types of gears, that is spur gear, helical gear, bevel gear and the worm gear, we will be using only the, we will be considering only the involute profile. 
For producing constant velocity ratio, the curved profiles of the matting teeth must be such that the law of gearing is satisfied. So the angular velocity is constant, remains constant throughout the meshing, throughout the transmission. That is what the law of gearing that is to be satisfied here using a particular profile. In order to have constant angular velocity ratio, the tooth curve must be so shaped that the common normal to the tooth profile at a point of contact will always pass through the pitch point irrespective of the position of the point of contact during the course of action. So, this is defined by the, the pressure angle. We will be discussing the pressure angle later stage. So, the pressure angle we, we have to the we have to consider. So, the conditions, the tooth curves must be so shaped that the common normal to the tooth profile at the point of contact will always pass through the pitch point irrespective of the position of po position of the point of contact during the course of action. So, that condition is to be satisfied for any profile. So, this is the involute, involute profile and in the first year engineering graphics design, engineering graphics course, you would have studied about the involute, drawing the involute profile. So, the same thing, it is part of the, the curve what we have drawn in the first year course. So, this is the involute, part of the involute. The advantage of the involute profile, variation in center distance does not affect the velocity ratio. Suppose, because of the working, because of the age of the gear, if there is small change, very, very small change in the center distance, that will not affect the velocity ratio when you use the involute profile. The pressure angle remains constant throughout the engagement, which, which results in smooth running. So, there is no change in the pressure angle. Pressure angle, angle is also constant. This is all the requirement for the effective, efficient gear drive. That is why the spur gear drive is more efficient. The straight teeth of basic rack for involute admit simple tools. Hence, manufacturing becomes simple and cheap. So, the manufacturing is also simple in the case of involute profile. And these are all cycloidal gears. So, the cycloid also we have drawn in our undergraduate first year course, the curve cycloid. So, this is part of the cycloid. And this is how the cycloidal gear engaging and transmitting the power. And the cycloid, advantage of the cycloid gear, cycloid gears do not have interference. So, interference is one important parameter in the gear manufacturing, gear design. So, the cycloid gear do not have the interference. Cycloid tooth is generally stronger than the involute tooth owing to the spreading, spreading flanks in, in, in contrast to the radial flank of the involute tooth. So, the strength of the stronger than the cycloid tooth are stronger than the, the spur gear, I mean uh, uh, involute tooth. Because of the spreading flank, they have high strength and the compact drive are achievable. So, this is also possible. The drive will be compact and uh, you have a strong teeth, uh, high strength teeth. Cycloid teeth have longer life since the contact is mostly rolling which results in low wear. So, the wear rate is also lower in the case of cycloidal gear. So, it will have longer life comparing with the involute profile. The disadvantage of the cycloidal gear. For a pair of cycloidal gear, there is only one theoretical correct center of distance for which the constant angular velocity ratio is possible. So, the hub of the cycloidal gear have a curved teeth unlike involute rack teeth. Hence, hub manufacture is difficult and costly. Cycloidal gear will have, will cost more. The cost of manufacturing of cycloidal gear is high. And in the first point we mentioned, uh, the, where there is only one theoretically con, co correct center of distance for which the constant angular velocity ratio is possible. So, when there is slight change in the center distance because of aging of the gear, so the efficiency of the cycloidal gear, the, I mean the, the ratio, the gear ratio will change, angular velocity will change and it will give inefficient drive and improper power transmission. The application of cycloidal gear, cycloidal gears are extensively used in the watches, clocks and instruments where the strength and the interference are prime consideration. Ca uh, uh, cast bull gears of paper mill machinery, crusher drive in the sugar mill. So, these are all the cycloidal gear applications. And the Novikov or wild harbor or circular arc profile tooth profile. So, this is the circular arc profile of the gear drive and the advantages, the convex surface is always in contact with another concave surface. The beam strength is much higher for the pinion than for the gear 
when the gear is much larger than the pinion. So, the beam strength is very high. So, the strength of the circular arc gear is more comparing with the other profile. The contacting teeth have rolling action and hence wear is also less. So, like your cycloidal gear, here again the wear is very less. Whereas, in the involute profile, the wear rate is more. In the convex profile, in the, if the convex profile is 1 on the pinion teeth and within the practical limit, the radii are close to the same value to provide maximum possible wear strength. So, the strength, the wear strength or the uh, impact strength, the beam strength, everything is, everything is higher for the circular arc gear profile. The disadvantages of Novikov gears, the circular arc profile are not conjugate. So, the conjugate action is also important. So, the involute profile, they are more conjugate. So, they are conjugate, they give conjugate action. So, the whereas the Novikov gears or circular arc profile, the circular arc profile are not conjugate and consequently in a plane, each tooth make a contact at only one point in each revolution. The circular arc gear are very sensitive to the variation in center distance and are hence best suited for slow speed operations. For the circular arc gears in a plane, the contact ratio is 0. Hence, the circular arc teeth cannot be used on spur gears, but must be used on the helical gears, where the contact ratio for the gear can be made greater than 1 by providing overlap ratio. So, these are all the disadvantages of circular arc gears. So, we stop here. So, we continue the gear fundamental in the next lecture and these are all the books I publish in mechanical engineering subject. You may refer to it for your better preparation and uh, I upload the video lectures on the YouTube channel. You subscribe the YouTube channel, use the videos for your better learning. So, thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. You, you may contact me through my mail ID or WhatsApp number for any clarification on the subject. So, we will continue in the gear fundamental in the next lecture.